Hello, class. Uh, this will be the second of the two recorded lectures for section 6.5, uh, continuing the properties of logs. First lecture, we introduced change of base formula, not that important, but the uh, other two that we introduced was the properties of uh, logs where we have the product rule and the quotient rule. And so what we're gonna introduce now is the last of the four important rules. And this one is called the power rule. And this is the one that um, is super critical when you're solving exponential functions. This is the one that I've used all the time. And so without any further ado, let me introduce to you the second of the two super important ones. And this is called the power rule. And do you remember when we had the law of exponents where base a m to the n, and we can multiply these together? Well, here's what ends up happening. If you have a log function where the argument is the log and you have an exponent, you can bring the exponent out front as a multiplication. And so we call this the power rule. And you'll see that when we get to the next section and when we get to applications, this is the rule that you use the most. So what I've done on our whiteboard here is put the four main rules up on the whiteboard. And so what we're going to do now, and then definitely in the next section as well, is use these four concepts to solve uh, exponential functions. So you see the bottom one is the power rule. Well, where's our first rule? The top one, okay. And the top one is the idea of log and exponential functions being inverses of one another. So, Let's do uh, a couple examples of just using uh, the power rule, and then we're going to combine them all into one big one. So say like you had this one, natural log of x to the 6. And so remember, we could use the power rule and bring the 6 to the other side. So if you think about this, this p value would be the 6. So the 6 comes out in the front and that would be natural log of x. This one's a little trickier, but say like you had this, log of base three, for example, and the book always writes it this way, seven, and then they'll put like a little four there. Remember what we talked about, that is, you could rewrite it this way, and you'll need to start doing that for calculus for sure, to the one fourth power. So now our p value here is one fourth, so you could rewrite it one fourth log of three and argument of seven. Again, one more just to show you, say like you had, we'll just make this base A as general, 11 to the minus three power. So again, our P value is minus three. So we could do minus three log of A to the, uh, argument of 11 for the log. So that illustrates a couple, uh, and we did uh, the quotient rule and the product rule uh, in the last lecture. So now the strategy will be, let's use all of them to do uh, certain um, simplifications. So what I'm gonna do is take a few problems actually from the book here. I thought I was on the right page, but obviously I'm not. I found the right page. So let's take a look at a problem like this. So let's take a look at this problem. I paused the race and get the problem up there. And so this is log of base two, and our argument is this crazy thing here, x cubed over x minus three. So the first thing you do need to realize is that we can't have a divide by zero, right? So x cannot equal three. And remember, we can't have a negative uh, argument for the log as well. So uh, we do have to say that x has to be greater than three. Most of the time, the problem will indicate that, but uh, you should realize that as well. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna use all these properties now to expand this to multiple uh, logs. So that's the strategy. And so you can see that we have a division there. So let's do this one. We're going to split it up where the division would be the numerator is the positive and the denominator is the negative. 
Oops, that's a three. Now remember, you can't split up if there's a plus or minus in there. It's just stuck that way. So there's nothing you really could do about it. So what's the other property that we could use? We could use the power rule. And so you see this three here will come out front. And then we could have X here and minus log of two and then X minus three. So that's the most simplification that you could do by using the three properties to expand everything out. Okay, so here's the next one we're gonna walk through. This one's a little bit more complicated. So if you got a good feel for this one, you'll have a good understanding with regards to uh, being able to do the expansion. And so see, we have uh, a numerator and denominator. And so we have to think about the constraint. Well, uh, X cannot be zero, right? Because we can't have a zero inside our log. And so we can't divide by zero, so X can't be two. And also we can't have negative uh, with regard to that. But you would see that when you square something, right? Then it turns positive as well. But you think about the square root in there, we can't have a negative uh, one. So if you looked in the book, this is uh, problem 52 in the book, it indicates that X X would be greater than two. So that handles any domain issues that we have to deal with. So the way I typically look at this is I, I always get rid of the fraction first. So what I'm gonna do is use the quotient rule first. And so, uh, well, rewind. What I'd like to do first is get rid of all the roots. And what we mean by roots is we have a square root in there. And so get rid of the root by writing it in a fractional exponent form. So we could use the uh, power rule at the end. And that's typically what you do is you'll do the power rule at the end. So the first thing I'm gonna do is rewrite it this way. X plus one, and that's to the one half power. And that's divided by X minus two squared. Now I'm going to use the quotient rule. So we leave the denominator the way it is. And so that would be x cubed times x plus one to the one half power. And now we could put the minus log of x minus two squared. So now in the first log here, we have a multiplication. So now we could do the product rule where the m value here would be x cubed and the n value would be x plus one to the one half power. So now you see we have three logs, x cubed, and now that's a plus, x plus one to the one half power, and now we still have our minus x minus two squared. So usually the last step is implement the power rule when you're expanding. And so the power rule, we have three exponents, one in each one of the logs. So the first exponent is the three. Second exponent is the one half we can bring out. And that really is simplification. It's nice that you don't have a square root now inside a log. And the last thing we do is bring out the squared. So this is a really good example uh, implementing every single one of the three properties that we've introduced in this section. And if you got a feel for how to do that, that's be the most complicated of any of the homework problems that you'll see in my math lab in this section. So now we're going to do some examples going the other way, where you can see this equation here has two logs and we wanna combine everything together. And so the strategy is uh, the first thing you wanna do is bring all the um, factors that are multiplying outside inside the uh, log function. So you could see here that our first log, we have one half there, right? So if you think about it here, that would be the P over here, all right? And so we could bring it inside the log. So the strategy is you would wanna do that first. And so we would do X to the one half power. And then we do minus log of three X cubed. 
So now we have a minus in between the two. What do we do with that? Well, now we could deal with the quotient rule, right? So the n here would be x cubed. That'll go down in the numerator or denominator. And m is the square root of x or x to the one half power. And that'll go up in the numerator. So it would look like this. x to the one half power over x cubed. So now what do we have here? Well, now we have an idea here where we could use the laws of exponents again, right? So remember, you could uh, either rewrite it or do uh, the subtraction, right? So this would look like this. Law of x to the 1 half minus 3. And so if you did that, that would be log of x to the 5 halves power. And you would say to yourself, okay, uh, I'm done. And you should be. Unfortunately, I can't change my math lab. I think that this, uh, whoops, I forgot my minus. <laughs> so one half minus three is minus five halves, right? But you'll see that uh, my math lab will want you to put it back in the root form. And so the way that they actually have this set up, is the minus brings it down into the denominator, right? So the first thing you would do is one over x to the 5 halves power, all right? And so what is, um, so you, you, you could leave it that way. And I believe that in my math lab, I have to rewind for a second. I believe that that would be the answer that you would want. Sometimes you'll see that they'll make this back into the root. And so you could also write this this way, log of one, and that would be uh, square root x to the fifth, which is the another representation going back to the root. You'll see that when you get into uh, calculus, this is actually the best way to leave it. Uh, with regards to dealing with those exponents. So process again, use the power rule, combine using um, the quotient rule, and then do some power uh, or the laws of exponents to make that uh, combination there. Okay, so there's the last of the examples we're gonna walk through and we're gonna combine these three logs into one big log. And again, if you were solving for X and this equaled something, this would be the strategy that you would wanna do. So actually combining, I think is actually application wise more important than splitting them up. So again, my strategy always is let's do um, the power rule first and bring all the factors that are multiplied inside the log function. And so the first, you should, this should be a log of five. They're all the same log or you can't combine them. <laughs> and so here we have log of five, and then we could bring the three inside to make it a cubed. Now we have minus log of five, and then we could bring the two inside And so that would be squared. And then we have minus log of five to the x to the fifth. And so um, the next strategy here would be, you can combine these and bring them both underneath in one big, because they're both minuses. And so the strategy could be is just do one combination. I don't wanna confuse you. So let's do this one first. So this would be, quotient rule, right? Because we have a minus. So we could do this combination first. And then we bring this down into the denominator. And we still have our log of five X to the fifth. So we have another minus. So you see it goes back down into the denominator again. And so you see, we got this crazy fraction here, where we have x plus 2 squared, x to the fifth. So the last step is to make sure that you can't do any cancellation. You remember what we did in the first one, we could combine those here, it doesn't look like there's any combination. 
the 2x minus 1 on the top is uh, it doesn't have any common factors for what's on the bottom or in the denominator. So this would be uh, the final answer. So that ends the uh, recorded lectures for this section 6.5. Uh, and uh, you'll see that most of the homework is combining and expanding log functions to get you used to using these properties.